evening, everyone. Uh, welcome to the Hingham Historic Districts Commission meeting. It's Thursday, June 14th, 2018. Thank you all for coming. Uh, first order of business is that Harbor Media is recording the proceedings tonight, so thank you for being here. Uh, second, let's, um, let's just talk briefly about any conflicts, if there anybody that needs to recuse themselves for any of the, the applications tonight, it'd probably be a good time to, um, to talk about that. Uh, so now you have, is that Middle Street? Yeah, so I'm going to recuse myself for 45 Middle Street. Okay. Uh, they're neighbors of mine, and I'm looking directly at the property. So not to uh, seem biased one way or another. Okay. Going to recuse myself, and then for 17, uh, 715 Main Street. I was not here for the uh, the last uh, session, so. Okay. Um, Feel free to participate in that. Just you won't be a voting. Yep. Thank you. Member on that one. Um, Virginia, I know you missed the, yeah. the last um, meeting, so. I will recuse myself from 45 Middle and 715 Main as I didn't attend the uh, meeting on the 31st and didn't watch the video. So you don't want to accuse yourself, you want to participate, but you, you don't have to, unless you have a conflict. I will not vote, yeah, no, okay. right. Right, okay. Um, just as a point of clarification, we didn't video anyway yeah. on the 31st, so there was nothing for you to watch. Yeah. So. All right. Thank you, I was looking for it, so I yeah, couldn't I'm sorry, to no, find no, anything. No. Yeah, okay. A, it was an added-in meeting. Okay. okay. So um, for the... Um, the fifth voting member um, for all of the proceedings. Um, ben, could you be the fifth on, on, yes. on that? Um, I'll need to add um, another voting member for um, 45 Middle and for 715 Main Street. So um, um, maybe uh, Mac, um, you were here for, for 45 Middle last time. I was. Okay. I the site visit. Okay. Could you do that one, be the, uh, the fifth voting member sure. on that one? And then um, what I thought we could do is then uh, on uh, 715 Main Street, um, Thomas, you're out, but um, Justin, could you be the, uh, the fifth on that one? Okay. Andrew, do you have, it's a little bit jumping around, but you have all, all that? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So, so Mac will be the, uh, the fifth on, uh, on 45 Middle and Justin on 715, and Ben will vote for for all of them. Okay. All right. Um, Andrea, did you want to talk about Flag Day? Uh, no, I just provided a flag for everybody. Thank, Thank, you. You. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Okay. Um, all right. So with that, uh, let's start it off with. Um, with Sebi uh, on uh, 753 Main Street. It's our first application. This is for an addition off the back of the house. Uh, with me is Sarah Littlefield, the owner. Hey, Sarah. How you doing? Sebi Strzokolowski, Strzokolowski Architecture. And Sarah uh, has owned since... Uh, 1997. 1997. Uh, probably the cutest house in Hingham. Certainly it was the smallest. And... Uh, it's amazing how many people looked at that and couldn't figure out how to move a family in. But we worked with Sarah in 2000 to do uh, open up and uh, extend the uh, the living space and develop a, a family kitchen and living room. And uh, this is a photograph of uh, how it uh, it ended up. So she has uh, you know a fairly uh, airy uh, contemporary feel uh, still within the character of the original house and uh, our proposal now is to add a uh, approximately 300 square feet of uh, uh, a mud entry and uh, laundry area <coughs> and a study Again, in the character of the house, the roof forms of the house, the windows. Uh, Sarah loves Brosco wood windows, so there's no argument there. And uh, I think the only change uh, on the on the side would be to add a shed dormer similar to the existing dormers. And then our proposal is that the addition uh, would drop down. It's it's interesting this house. The kind of awkward thing about it is the height. It comes out of the ground, and that 
don't know when that happened, but that's what people used to do to get mechanical space and additional storage space in basements. So that's raised. And we continued in 2000 that floor elevation. Uh, <clears throat> the proposal would be to drop this addition, as you can see, and to drop the deck uh, so that uh, in elevation it ties it more to the ground than it is now, and it's more actually traditional in feel. Uh, so we feel that, uh, and then we'd be opening up uh, more of the, the kitchen area, but that's all internal, no changes uh, other than the addition to the exterior. And uh, traditional chimney proposed on the back side that you can see in this elevation. But this, uh, this drop in, in the deck, we feel, actually you don't see it from the street, but it, it eliminates that, that kind of uh, high facade of the deck that's there now and gives uh, Sarah something to sit on and uh, connects to the ground. So I, I think that's a, a fairly comfortable way to extend the house, make it more level before her. All the same materials, same windows, same details. Thank you. Any questions for the, uh, for the applicant? So how much of the proposed uh, <coughs> addition do you is, is visible from the street? Uh, only the, from this side, the uh, just that side continuation. Right. So that would be here, <coughs> and actually there'd be a, a single window. In the simplification of that <coughs> element, so we excuse me, <coughs> feel it's kind of a heard all the time here, but big house, little house, back house. And then we'll do the barn when. <laughs> okay. But I, I like the fact that this feels informal compared to that. So we're not just continuing the, the house, but sort of ending it in something that's uh, less formal and uh, again ties it to the ground. What's the. Um the code for for chimneys, um, Savvy, in terms of the the height that they need three to be feet in. above, ten feet away. Is that what what this is? Or? Yeah. So it just it's 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 a code. Is it more than that, or just at code? Uh, the issue with the with a, a low addition, it goes beyond code because there's a downdraft thing that happens when wind moves over a roof. Uh, so we won't make it any higher than we have to, but but there is a draft issue with a, a low element, a one-story element. You see often people have to, to do a one-story family room and they put the fireplace, you'll see yeah. extensions having to be done. Okay. So that's that, that height there is, is uh, <coughs> would, you, would you characterize that as a minimum height or is that above? That's a, that's a I'd say minimum height. Okay. Yeah. I mean, you've got this one in <coughs> higher. Okay. Yeah, I'd be concerned about the relationship to this roof, even though it's more than 10 feet away. Yes. Curious. <coughs> I think it's appropriate. I think the ability to be able to drop it helps it from a roof perspective, but then it also helps the proportions right. of that small piece off the back as a pulse so something that's even taller and more narrow. Be more welcoming uh, yep. entrance, that's the one that she'll use now. Mm -hmm. <coughs> more so than, than that. Right. <coughs> Maybe we can you know work through the uh, the worksheet just to make sure we're, we're not missing anything. Uh, it's pretty straightforward but 
um, for the new construction site, um, does the new building reflect the site factors that are common on the street in terms of setbacks, orientation, the street spacing, and distance from adjacent buildings? Yes. Mm -hmm. All in agreement, yes? yes. Okay. Um, is the scale of the new construction consistent with the width to height proportions and floor to floor proportions when compared to adjacent structures into the site? Yes. Yep. Okay, agreement. Um, is the new building compatible with the adjacent historic buildings and other historic buildings in the streetscape in terms of height, design, materials, roof forms, foundation, and footprint? Yes. 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 Okay, all in agreement on that. Um, is the height of the new building compatible with the adjacent historic buildings and other historic buildings in the streetscape? Um, proportion, I think, is the, um, the key element here. Um, is, there, uh, is there a harmonious relation of each part of the side of the building to the whole? Yes. 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 Okay. Does the new building reflect the rhythm of the surrounding buildings in a manner that contributes to the special character of the historic district? Yep. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yes. Um, is the design of the new building architecturally compatible with the surrounding buildings that contribute to the overall character of the historic district? Yes. Yep. Yes. And are the materials proposed for the new building compatible with the historic materials and finishes found in the surrounding buildings that contribute to the special character of the historic district? Yes. Windows and doors proposed for the new building compatible with those of the surrounding buildings and, and that contribute to the special character historic district with respect to material, subdivision, proportion, pattern, and detail. Yes. 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 Sevi said those are going to match the existing uh, roof. <coughs> Sevi's picked up on the roof. Um, the original um, are the roof forms and pitches of the new building consistent with the adjacent historic buildings. Okay, and new construction, oh, excuse me, um, character. Uh, will the new building affect the overall character of the historic streetscape in this location with respect to the site? Character defining site features, trees, and historically significant district vistas and views. Not negatively. Not negatively. <laughs> so. Okay, so no, no impact? That's, that's, that's a positive finding. You should, you should, use, you should yeah. use the word enhance, maybe. I remember yeah. that <laughs> comes up every time. It's not time. a negative impact. Not so a, a negative. positive finding. Oh. Okay, so I think that it's um, like the, uh, the addition meets all of our criteria. Um, are there any other questions for, uh, for SEVI? Are you just going to do a cast in place foundation, no veneer stone because of the, the height? Right. Okay. Oh, I, and by the way, it, it steps back because we have that uh, Hatfield Amendment continuation of a non conforming setback. Just got one question for clarification just to confirm that the dormers on the side on the existing addition, you're adding the two dormers, right? Or is it just adding one? That exists. One. That one exists. exists. You're adding one. Okay. Yep. Anything else? Good. Should we go forward with the motion at this point? Okay. I think so. Anybody like to do that? I can. Thanks, I'd like to make a motion uh, for a certificate of appropriateness for 753 Main Street uh, plans plans dated April 25th April 25th for an addition off the rear, adding a dormer on the existing structure right-hand side towards the rear. Um, materials in kind with existing structure. Paint to match the existing structure. All 
in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Okay. Good. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks very much. Thanks, Ben. Good project. Thanks. The project. Bye. Andrea, I'm running. Um, I'm running five minutes early, so I mean, we could go through some of the minutes real quick, yeah, if you want to. Um, we could do that. I received some changes. But Ben, we can change it if you'd like. I didn't make that change, um, but I made the changes Ronnie recommended, and um, and Justin, and so I think we're. Okay. I think I'm up to date with what everybody had requested. So, anything else? So, we have minutes from <coughs> March 1st, um, April 12th, and May 17th. Um, a lot of work putting those together. Thank you. Um, any other comments? Ronnie, you may want to just look and make sure that I. I Did I get, do that wrong? I didn't get drawings for these two updated drawings. Oh, you know what? We don't have them. We don't yet. have them. Okay. Yeah. Hopefully um, Heidi does. <laughs> um, no, just just voting members. Um, you know, so, yeah, so Ben would be the fifth voting member on this, like with the other applications, I guess. So it's a point of clarification. that I made with the chairman asking for disclosures. I think that was April and May, but not March. Um, Thank you. I think you are exactly right. Yeah. Yep. And I should have made that clear. In no, no, no. That, that was, I should have realized that. Okay. I shall eliminate that. Thank you. I'm good. Anything else? You want to make a motion, yeah. Ronnie? Thank you. Um, I'll make a motion to accept the minutes for um, the March. The March first. March first meeting. Uh, April second meeting. April twenty. Uh, April twelfth. Oh, April twelfth meeting, right? And May seventeenth meeting uh, with the changes um, reflected in here and the one additional change for March. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. Um, second small piece of business. We can go through the dates now and sure. and, and um, ratify those too. Yep. Did um, everyone have a chance to look at the um, the proposed dates? I know Andrea every year goes through the uh, the school calendar, <laughs> all the days. What else? To kind of make sure there's no conflicts. Yeah. <laughs> a, bunch, holidays. a bunch of things. So hopefully, but probably didn't check with each person individually about where they when they were going on vacation. <laughs> <laughs> but but beyond that, um, you know things do come up from time to time. So the proposed meetings will be. Um, it's it's um, it's 2019. We we're all we're we're square through 2018, correct? Through the end, or is it? Of July. End of July. No, I'm sorry. End of June. So, beginning. Um, July 30th. Beginning June, f July 1st is the new fiscal year. New fiscal year is is July. So the first meeting will be July 30th. Will be July the 12th. 12th. Oh, excuse me. I'm looking at application due date. I'm sorry. All right. So. July 12th. Yep. Okay. I got it. Any questions? Looks good to me. Looks good? Yep. All right. There it 
Um, I can make a motion that we approve the proposed meeting dates Second. for 2018 and 2019, beginning with the fiscal year July 1st, and the application due dates, which are approximately two weeks ahead of the, the meeting dates. Do we have a second? Second. second. Okay. Jeff the count. Um, all in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? All right. Good. Thank you. Excellent. Thanks. All right. Um, next up, uh, we have Greg and Lisa here with Heidi um, to talk about 45 Middle Street. Heidi, I have to apologize, but the, um, the equipment is not here. That's okay. I actually brought good old fashioned <laughs> Thank you. And really, it was more of an overview of what we discussed at the site visit. Okay, thank you. I'm not that worried. Sorry about that. But thank you. Good evening, everyone. Hi. Hi. Hello. Hello. I'm Heidi Connor from HC Design here with Lisa Tonin, and we're hoping Greg, her husband, um, is on his way. He is at a. He's handing out the youth football <laughs> equipment. <laughs> of course. Excellent. It's the night. Um, so I have five copies. Do you we'll share, share, share. share. Oh. Okay. So, so this is what we reviewed at the, at the site visit on Saturday, and we did make one more revision by lowering the the dormer between the main house and the garage, another six inches, so we have a full 12. So it's really kind of... Heidi, why don't I make some additional... Oh, copies. thank you. Yes. So, you know, the whole goal was to define the barn garage kind of as an individual structure. And using... I don't know, I, I didn't bring copies of the um, School Street project, but, but Hans has some and a few other people I believe have them. And, and we thought that was really a great example. Um, and Virginia, I know you weren't there, but what right. we did was, it's, it's 20 feet, um, so I'm less non-conforming than the existing garage, um, and that's, I know that's a zoning issue. Um, but the part that pops forward is 16 feet, and that's what this is, okay. that gable, and it's smaller than this gable. Uh -huh. um, so we wanted it to be secondary, but relate to it. Yeah. That was our goal. And then I recessed this four-foot door here to really make this pop and look like its own entity, um, but still give them a man door to go in. It's, it's an unusual site that it's so narrow, mm -hmm. one of the most narrow in that neighborhood. So. We didn't have a lot to work with, but our goal was to really make, it's a one car garage, and they, they really didn't want a two car garage. They really just wanted, you know, an attached garage, so one of them can come in, they can come in with the kids and not lose their backyard. They have a beautiful backyard that, um, it even has a fence, and their neighbor has a beautiful field in the back, and it just, it's gorgeous. We didn't want to cut it up with a driveway, the neighbor, uh, who's immediately adjacent to here, has a barn very close to ours here. And they also didn't want a driveway going all the way back because they have a pool back here and that's their private yard. So they really didn't want cars and <coughs> asphalt right there. So, so our goal was, we're not getting a two-car garage. It's a garage and a half, but it, it meets their needs. And as you know from when we came at School Street, <laughs> they had wanted a home office above that, that garage. And so we are still able to get the, the garage home office above for Greg um, as, as he and his run a home business. So, so that's kind of where we're at. And I, I think Hans' suggestion to lower that dormer another 12 inches really does make the, um, the barn garage pop a little bit more. I'll talk to that one. Yeah, you, so you handed that at the so, so, so this is one that Andrea actually recommended we, we look at. It's on um, School Street, um, but it was recently approved, and this is kind of the impetus of what, what we were going for. And um, I also Those reduced the size of the window on the half story above the, the door. Um, we had it longer before, and to me it looked a little more formal, and I thought this was more proportion with a garage, barn. Um, 
used to be this size. And it just looked too big. Oh, yeah. So I reduced it. It's the same height as this, but I made it a little bit wider. And we still are going to do the, the hay hook. Um, and we're going to have that custom made. And we're actually going to copy the one that was on Lisa's home on School Street. So, so that's kind of where, where we're at. Good. Um, questions for Heidi? Comments? I know the, uh, the site visit helped out a lot. I think so too. And, and I have to say, I wish Greg were here because he did such a great job with the story. Oh, yeah. You would have loved it. <laughs> really? It was crooked like an old barn and everything. It was great. <laughs> Are they still standing? Uh, no, he took it down know. immediately after. He was worried. He was walking around it. He's like, God, that falls. I'm in big trouble. <laughs> but it, I just think it really helped because um, he actually gave us you know, the, the vertical and then showed us where the ridge was. And, and it is 38 feet back from the front porch. And that's what's so hard to tell from my drawings is you can't get that perspective unless you're there. I think that is the first time an applicant put up a story pole. <laughs> oh, you're kidding! <laughs> By themselves? Yes, I think it, I think it is. I he mean, actually took a day off from work. You know, oh he asked me to send the drawings on Thursday, so he understood, and I gave him directions exactly what I needed. That's pretty cool. I think it's also the first time an applicant moved after we approved a, a house. Before they even did it. And they moved to another house. So. And we're copying the first ones. So. <laughs> Number of firsts here. Well, I think it shows that they love the neighborhood. They feel like stewards for historic homes. And that's important, too. I, think, I mean, I think these are great improvements over the last one. I think dropping that a foot. Um, I think it helps a lot. Good. And you'll never see what that pitch is because yeah. it's buried between the two buildings. Um, I mean, I don't, I don't know if anybody else has any comments on the massing, but I think at some point, if you can go over the materials, I know you I submitted the packet last time, this. but I think that's um, something you certainly need to look at. Most of it is um, matching existing. Um, so the, the clapboard will match the existing clapboard. The trim is going to match the existing trim. We're doing the same asphalt roof. The gutters are currently extruded aluminum. I only like putting gutters where there's a single story door. Um, I just think you're asking for ice dams if you put it at the second story. So we'll have um, perimeter drains at our foundation to catch water and get it away from the house. So there'll be very few, little gutter. Um, we're using Marvin Wood Ultimate. Um, we're only having windows on the back, and that, that front one can be all wood um, in the barn, second floor. But the ones in the back are, are wood, simulated, you know, divided light, and painted. Um, we prefer the two over two. The house is kind of a mix right now of two over two and, and one over one. I think the two over, over two is more appropriate, and they look less new. Um, the garage door will be all custom. We're actually mimicking what's at the school street house. <laughs> um, the entry door in that alcove is just going to be a Simpson all wood painted black. It's going to disappear. Um, the hardware will be Baldwin. And you'll see in the back of your packet, we're doing um, a light that also is on the current current school street garage because we really like it. So, so really everything is matching existing um, except this. Because I don't think it should be onion lights, I don't think it should be carriage lights, I think it should just be this. Barn light. Barn light. Yeah. A working light, like yeah, a worker's light. There are those on other parts of the house already. Are these? I, I don't think maybe, maybe so. Maybe they were on school that. street. Right. Okay. But they weren't. That's where I'm yeah, they weren't at this house. This house is a little more formal than the School Street home, but I think with the structure, I like this better on it. Because we don't want it to look like a carriage house. We want it to still have a kind of a barn feel. So that's our list. Does that make sense? Any comments? No, I think it's very nice. I think it's very Thank good. You. 
I, I made some specific comments about um, you know last time about detaching this and putting it back in the yard but after coming out there and seeing um, you know your, your yard how it's situated the angles and how the house is positioned um, you know I, I'm a proponent of open space and uh, I think that if you were to do something detached and put it in the back of the um, back of the yard there it would um, be detrimental to the property and I mean you, you would lose a lot of open space so I think this is a um, I think this is a solution um, which works with this type of house because it um, it makes it makes use of the available space that you have now and it doesn't um, it doesn't take too much um, of you know it's, it's tight back in there and it's it's the neighborhood's tight so you just you want to kind of you want to keep with that the way the other houses are and the way your property is designed so I think it's an, an efficient use of space and I think the um, I think the uh, the attachment works especially with the connector here yeah. so you can see the two separate pieces yeah I think that's really nice and I think the fabric of the neighborhood has 40 percent attached garages some are barns some are not but you know, we're not the first in the neighborhood, which I like. You know, I think it will lend well. I agree with Hans. I had thought about could it be recessed to look like the other home, okay. um, and going on your on your lot, it really wouldn't it wouldn't suit the property well, and you'd lose uh, so much of the yard. It really doesn't suit it. So, going on site made a huge difference. Oh, so great! Thank I you. I support this. Thank you. You want to go through the worksheet? Make sure we, we're not missing anything. Um, make sure we have all the materials and maybe some other questions will come up there. Um, as far as the site goes, is a proposed addition placed so that it will minimize the visual impact on the historic structure? Um, you know, I had a question about that last time, and I think my, my question's been answered, so I think, it, I think it's a yes to that. Are there any other? Deviations from that because it's set back 30, 38 feet. Yeah. 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 Yep. Um, the, the, the drawings are somewhat deceiving. It's hard to depict that, and uh, it's gonna. This is gonna be minimized as a result of that that setback. I think when you're you're looking at it head on with the right. drawings, it's it's hard to right. visualize exactly what's going on here. Um, is the proposed addition in keeping with the streetscape? Yes. Yeah. Yes. Okay. All in favor of that. Um, is the addition over 50% larger in square feet than the existing historic building? No. No. Um, is the scale of the new construction compatible with the historic building? Yes. You all in agreement on that? Yep. yep. Okay. Yes. I think that's and certainly um, your adjustments to the connector and the, uh, the ridge height I think helps, helps out that, that a lot too. Um, does the addition overpower the historic building? No. Okay, good. Uh, volume, is the overall volume of the historic building, including the addition, compatible with the adjacent historic buildings and the other historic buildings in the streetscape in terms of height, design, materials, roof forms, foundation, and footprint? Yes. Yes. In agreement there? Yes. Okay. Height, is the height of the new addition subservient to that of the existing historic building? Yes. Yes, it is. Is the height of the new addition compatible with the uh, other historic buildings in the streetscape? Yes. 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 Um, proportion, does the design of the addition create a harmonious whole when added to the historic building? Are the void style relationships of the, uh, of the addition compatible with the historic building? Yes. Yes to both? Yes. Yep. Okay. Does the historic building plus the addition reflect the rhythm of the, of the surrounding historic buildings in a manner that contributes to the special character of the historic district? Yes? Yes. It is the design of the addition architecturally compatible with the existing historic building and with the surrounding buildings that contribute to the overall character of the historic district? Yes. I think it does. Does the addition connect the primary historic building to an outbuilding that was historically separate? No. <laughs> Are the materials proposed for the new building compatible with the historic materials and finishes found in the existing historic building and other surrounding historic buildings? Yes. yes. Do the materials of the addition contribute to the special character of the historic district? Yes. Yes. 
Um, windows and doors. Are the windows and doors proposed for the addition compatible with the existing historic building and with those of surrounding buildings that contribute to the special character of the historic district with respect to material, proportion, pattern, and detail? Uh, I have a question, Heidi. Sure. The, you, you mentioned in the front, the, so they're all wood windows, right? Yes. You're doing all wood windows. Okay. Some will be true divided light and others simulated? The, the back that you can't see will be simulated. Okay. Will, will be the insulated glass, but that front one. Now, now here's a question. If, even though that's a new window, but it's in the front, can that be simulated divided light? But yeah, what? We've, we, have, we have done that. Yeah, we have approved that. So that way, then all our windows match. And they'll all be wood. And oh. they'll all be the, the five eighths. Okay, so the two windows in the front facing facing Mill Street would be a, yeah, in a simulated divided yes. light. Okay. So the answer is yes to your okay. question, Mr. Chairman. Okay. Um, did you have any questions about doors, Pat or Mike? Or we're, we're good there. These are all wood doors. Correct? Yes. Okay. All right, so it looks like there's a yes on that. Uh, roof, are the roof thorns and pitches of the addition consistent with the historic building and adjacent historic buildings? Yes. 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 Will the addition affect the overall character of the historic streetscape in, 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 in this location with respect to site character defining features, site features, trees, and historically significant district vistas and views? Not negatively. Not negatively? No impact? No negative impact. No negative impact. Okay. Does the addition compromise a significant amount of the historic fabric of the of the original historic building? Um, no. 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 Um, if the addition were to be removed in the future, would the existing historic building retain its integrity? Yes. 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 Okay. So I think we've um, we've met the findings for for additions. Um, any other uh, questions on belt materials and good? Um, so voting members are Mac, Ben, Mike, myself, and uh, Ronnie, who we indicated earlier. Okay. And Vir mm -hmm. Virginia, did you? No, I'm I didn't vote here, yeah. but okay, good. All right. Um, Motion from somebody? I can do that. Okay. okay. Uh, I'd like to make a motion for certificate of appropriateness for 45 Middle Street. Plans, elevations, dated uh, June 14th, 2018, uh, including plan view, dated June 14th, 2018. Um, is, it, is it fair to say that the packet that you gave us on the 31st is not changed? Okay, so then a, a company packet for 45 Middle Street, the um, product brochure from our hearing on five on um, May 31st, which um, outlines siding, roofing, gutters, window manufacturer, garage doors exterior doors and the light fixtures. Um, trim of addition to match original house. Materials in kind. Demolition, demolition of the existing yeah. garage. Yes, we'd have to include demolition of the existing garage. And you all got to go inside. Mm -hmm. Anything else? Missing? Second. Say simulated divided light. Windows. Well, right on the windows, we said all wood windows simulated divided light are permissible. Insulated glass. Right. Ronnie, you got a second? Yes. Okay, all in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? All right, great. Thank you very much. Thank, Thank you. you all so much. We appreciate it. Thank yeah. you. Good, Good luck. luck. Good luck, yeah. Thank you.
Tell Greg it was a tough meeting. <laughs> I saw your package on 7.50. Okay. Um, so this was just a question. Whether or not these Okay. Um, Heidi, you're sticking around for 7.15 Main, correct? 7.15 Main at 7.15. Wow, that's impressive. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Oh, I have a question. May I get a copy of the worksheet? It Absolutely. It would be really helpful for me to make sure that I'm addressing all of yes, those. Yes, in fact, Great. Thank Thank you. You. I can send it to you electronically. Oh, that would be great. Yeah, because I looked for it online and I couldn't find it. It's not. <laughs> okay. That's a good idea. Um, so, we're here now at 715 Main Street, um, and I want to thank all of you who were able to come out to the site visit. Um, you know, the one change we made that we all discussed, and I, you may already all have this elevation, but we, um, we clarified the height so that the, the new addition in the back is six inches lower than the main ridge, and on the side elevation we pushed the... Um, the dorm are 12 inches back. So it really does define, again, the original home as the priority. And then we added the swoop on the, the little covered mudroom just so it, it matches the, the roof of the little rock. Um, you know, I wish I had had more photos from when I started in the winter before the trees. Um, you know, came in, but from my images, if you can remember, it's really hard to see anything from the uh, street. Um, and again, I think you all have, you know, these are some images, like now, that's the front entry, so the mudroom, Virginia, I do, all I'm doing is mm -hmm. copying this, there's a pilaster, mm -hmm. and I'm copying, I'm just having one here, and just, giving them a little cover there. These are images, I think you all have them, um, or at least it's on the PowerPoint, at least in the winter. Um, but I had to go into the side yard to even see it. It wasn't something that is readily visible from the street. So, so the addition really is in the rear of the property. Um, you really can't see it from Mill Lane at all because um, it's pushed farther away. It's in the smack in the middle. So when you look at our property, I can at least um, hold this up. So it's, it's basically a big fat rectangle and our addition is tight to the, the middle of the house and most of the property is where you really can't see. Um, you all should have plan. So there's quite a lot of private property to the side, so it really is difficult to see. And, and it, it says that it was built in the 1930s. I think it was built in the 30s as a restoration cape. As many of you came inside with me and the details inside look like it's an 1800, like even mid 1800s, but then we have ceiling height. So they, they really paid attention to the details to make it look older than it really is. Um, and we are going to be restoring that front um, portico. It's really beautiful and uh, warrants some attention. Let's just see if I have a picture of that. So here's the view from the side elevation with the trees. <laughs> if anyone wants to look at those, um, so those are there. And so, you know, one thing that we were discussing, and we'd like some more kind of input, is um, the windows. And I've made phone calls this week. Um, neither JB Sash or um, Hingham Lumber or even Lapa. The page um, restore windows. 
Um, I, I am talking now to Horner Millwork, and they do have, and Ben, you may have, I don't know if you ever used their sash replacement kits for historic windows. No. So I can take out the rope and the weights, insulate, which you can't see, and they actually put in these vinyl jams, and there's a wood stop on the exterior, so you can't see it. Um, but they can either give me a, a new or restored sash, and either new glass, or we can have a master carpenter install the old glass. So that was one solution I found. Um, I've also been talking to a company in Waltham, and I don't know if any of you heard of the Cleary Brothers. Yeah. Have you had any good luck with them? Well, they're, they're um, big proponents of window restoration. And, and so I, I'm playing phone tag with them, but um, they restored the Quincy homestead, and it's all original. And they restored the sills, the sash, and reused the glass. Now, I don't know if that's going to cost a million dollars, <laughs> but I'm, I'm looking into that. This is the first company that I found, and I can pass this around, that, that will restore everything. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, we were just looking for options. So I don't know if the board has had any other luck with how to address old windows like this. And these are just, you know, our biggest thing that we just hate are the storm windows. And I'd love not to put storm windows over, especially if we're going to spend a lot of time and energy restoring windows. Um, you know, you always can see the, the storm unit versus the screen unit. And it, oh, you know, it does obstruct some of the original trim detail. And it really is beautiful and it's wide. Um, so, so I think you're looking for guidance. All the time. Yeah, you know, with with how to address the original windows. Every window that's in the house. Well, yeah, I mean, they're all. With them. I haven't I, counted them. Our, yeah, our preference would be to replace all of them. And I mean, so by your governance, it's the front facade is what you're looking for us to hold on to. So there's four across the front on the lower level, and then two Any, anything that's visible from a public way yeah, okay. would, Even be, the side would be would be our, our our concern. And um, I, I know that um, some members of the commission went in and, and took a look at the windows, and maybe can offer some some views on that too. And I, I also know that we've um, we may be able to give you a, another option or two in terms of restoration. Um, that that would be very helpful. You know, I know. It sounds like you've already done some great legwork, but maybe another option that that Andrea can help you out with. Um, you know, the board, you know, in general, would like to steer applicants towards restoration, um, and preservation, um, and you know, if if the windows are you know beyond repair and are in, in such bad shape, then 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 we'll go down the route with okay. with replacement. But um, I, I would like to hear what. Um, what, what ben and I have a question, Mike, um, or Ben, or Matt. Have you had experience with Allied Storms? They are. Um, they do a lot of custom work, and they they fit right into um, right over the window. So it's a, a it's better virtually in, invisible. It's better than a triple track. That's what I'd love to look into. Now, is it on the interior or the exterior? Exterior. Okay. They have exterior. Because you and I have looked at interior ones. I know. So cheesy. So I, I wish we could find one. Um, 17 Miles Road um, used, uh, th those are, I don't know if they used that company, but they're, that's what they used on all of the windows. They had every single window restored. This was a number of years ago. And then they um, used the that type of a storm that just fits right in and it, it makes a big difference. So is it a wood um, is it a wood structure around the not necessarily I uh, I think you can get, obtain the wood but these I think were uh, metal. I think the original are aluminum. Yeah I don't think on the house that they're, they're wood storms now. We were talking I don't remember if it was Justin or Matt where it looked like there may have been the hooks for the old storms that 
were glass and wood, but I think they're long gone. Those weren't there when we bought the house, but you're right, there are like, the you know, hooks. you can see the hooks. I, I, there might there might have even been a couple of the screens in the garage oh, when really? we bought that. Yeah, <laughs> but I think like one or two of them, if yeah. I remember correctly. So I'm guessing that may have been original in the 30s. Andrea, isn't there a place in Rhode Island, um, I don't want to say comparable to Cleary, but um, um, similar. Yes. Uh, I can't think of the name at this For point. Window restoration. You can probably Google it and yeah. see what comes up. I can help you with that. Okay, that'd be great. It also may be worth a consultation with Cleary. Yeah. Um, he, um, he did the uh, presentation at the Historical Commission when oh. we did a Windows presentation. Um, what did you think? Um, um, comprehensive. Okay. Thoughtful and comprehensive was my uh, was my take on it. The, your your house is such a it it is mind boggling that it was built in the 30s when you look at when you look at the details. Uh, someone took great effort, and even the windows have antique glass in them. Exactly, it is the wavy glass, and uh, even some of the interior French doors. Yeah. into the sunroom have wavy glass. Right. And when you go in, them go into the basement and you look at the framing and you know right away, no, yeah. it really is a 30s. Um, so as, as the chairman said, we are preservationists. We'd be looking, we'd be looking for uh, preserving those that are visible from a uh, public way. I think you'll find um, um, once, once restored, they will operate like any new window. It really, they really do. Um, sometimes even better yeah. 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 So someone that knows what they're doing will actually will actually do the correct weight weight ratio of sash to the weights and the weight pockets so that it really and operates that is smoothly. Take the same, that once they're finished restoring them, they're, they're yeah, and that that built up paint that you see is all part of the process of all gets removed. Um. Any any um, estimate on the age of the windows? This is the difficult part. That so that you know, the, the oh. house is clearly a 1930s frame. I don't know if those windows came from somewhere else or if those. That's just what was available. You could order antique glass back then for those windows. It's hard to say. Yeah. They're a thicker sash, um, and the sash locks are a little more current. But those could have gotten swapped out. It's hard to say if the hardware was original. But when we went out there, um, that the side, the left side of that building, um, over the over the years, you know, owners have gone to great lengths to to give it. Um, an older, an yeah, older feel yeah. with, um, with the sills, the paint, and some and the clouds, projects. The foundation. Yep. You saw? Did they make it? Okay, thanks. I know, you, I know you mentioned your concern about heat loss in your neighbors and getting a bill from National Grid. I was questioning monthly those. reminders. Yes, we hate you're those. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Where we're told that we're the worst people in the neighborhood right. every month, yes. I, th I think you'll find that a restored window is going to help. Um, considerably, but also um, you've got a, an older boiler that you're going to get rid of, and that's going to certainly help. Uh, the boiler, interestingly, is dated in the 1920s because um, I have had that looked at. Uh, the guy from Mass Save said he had never seen anything like it and spent right. a good hour finding the date stamp on it. So it's like 1928 or something. That's funny. Um, which is interesting. Please don't tell me I have to hold on to that. <laughs> It is amazing though. A leftover. It was a great discount. <laughs> and I don't know if you saw in our basement the old refrigerator. Uh, Ice block oh, cabinet. No, we, saw the incinerator. we saw the incinerator. We saw the incinerator. Yes, I've often joked, call Dateline NBC if I go missing <laughs> yeah. in the incinerator. Right. Um, but um, but the uh, the old refrigerator is down in the basement too with the ice block cabinet, which right. is pretty cool. And some of the iron pipe is oversized. It was steam at one point, yeah. so you're yeah. going to lose a lot of efficiency there. Yeah. Um, you will no longer be National Grid's favorite customer <laughs> if you update not. that. <laughs> okay. Um, questions about the addition? Comments? 
Yeah, it's beautiful, isn't it? She did a really great job. Thank you. Yes, we, we love the charm of the house and are looking to just enhance it. I, I had a couple of additional questions for Heidi. The, the beadboard ceiling, the Nantucket beadboard ceiling, I think that says it's for the mudroom. Is that at the front? I'm sorry, it's just that mudroom. <coughs> the only place it would be that little um, you know, covered entry at the mudroom. Okay. So we just want the beadboard. Is this, the beadboard in the house. Is this a wood? I believe Nantucket is wood. Okay. It be wood. Okay. You just have these relief cuts in it, so it's why. hard to. Yeah. It's hard. Okay. Okay. <laughs> but no, it will be wood. And then, did you find from about from LePage if they will have um, the the bottom sash if the if the um, they they rails are okay? Yeah. Okay. They can reduce it. I think their but standard you, is you taller. Want chunky. You wanted it historically chunky, or you want it like. To match existing. Ma I'm going to have them match these. I you think are? when okay. Doug came out. Yeah. And they can do that. Okay. I have no other questions. I had one question, I didn't. Sure. Um, I know you stepped back the dorm or 12 inches on the uh, on the second floor over to the. That, to the left side up here yes is there any way to like move that wall in maybe six inches for a shadow line or does that i mean i was looking at the inside drawings I as know. well so and when you look at the it. upside i think it becomes tricky but i was yeah. just going to ask we look at it but, but having that step and this look so, so it would step easy. back here yeah. yeah and then i lose my shutters and i love the shutters and I really liked that we were continuing the shutters because then that window would lose it. And it just started looking busy if one window had no shutters and I have shutters everywhere else. Okay. And I really did like that detail. <coughs> and I was looking at the house, the cape literally across the street, it's flush. Okay. And they even have their second floor flush, but I like ours step back. Yeah, I do too. So, so I actually found it. seemed like busy. good reasons. Mm -hmm. It was just busy, and I love the shutters. I think they're beautiful. That was my question. Okay. Anything else? Get the worksheet. Let's see if we missed anything. All right. Um, Place so that it will minimize the visual impact of the historic structure? Yes. 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 Is a proposed addition in keeping with the streetscape? Yes. Yes. Is the addition of is the addition over fifty percent larger in square feet than the existing historic building? No. 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 Scale. Is the scale of the new construction compatible with the historic building? Yes. 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 Does the addition overpower the historic building? No. no. Is the overall volume of the historic building, including the addition, compatible with the adjacent, adjacent historic buildings and other historic buildings in the streetscape in terms of height, design, materials, roof forms, foundation, and footprint? Yes. 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 Like the massing meets <coughs> criteria. Height. Um, is a height of new addition subservient to that of the historic building, existing historic building? Yes. Yes. So it is below. Is the height of the new addition compatible with the other historic buildings in the streetscape? Yes. yes. Proportion. Does, does the design of the addition create a harmonious, I'm going to get this word, harmonious whole when added to the historic building? Yes. Yes. Are the void solid relationships of the addition compatible with the historic building? Yes. Yes. Okay. Does the historic building plus the addition reflect the rhythm of the surrounding historic buildings in a manner that contributes to the special character of the historic district? Yes. 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 Okay. Is the design of the addition architecturally compatible with the existing historic building? and with the surrounding buildings that contribute to the overall character of the historic district? Yes. yes. 
Does the addition connect the primary historic building to an outbuilding that was historically separate? No. 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 Materials. Um, Heidi's given us a material sheet. Um, pretty lengthy. Um, are the materials proposed for the new building compatible with the historic materials and finishes found in the existing historic building and other surrounding historic buildings? Yes. Yes. Do the materials on the addition contribute to the special character of the historic district? Yes. Okay. Are the windows and doors proposed for the addition compatible with the ex existing historic building and with those of surrounding buildings that contribute to the special character of the historic district with respect to material, proportion, pattern, and detail? Now are we saying re restoration? No. Okay. And I can follow up with what direction we choose for the restoration and leave it to Andrea. Um, additions, you know, uh, simulated divided light wood is, is, um, that would just be in the back okay. facing the right. rear. That's okay with us. Um, are the roof forms and pitches of the additions consistent with the historic building and adjacent historic buildings? Yes, yes they are. Will the addition uh, affect the overall character of the historic streetscape in this location with respect to the site, character defining site features, trees, and historically significant district vistas and views? Yes. Yes. Does the addition compromise a significant amount of historic fabric of the original historic building? No. 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 If the addition were to be removed in the future, would the existing historic building retain its integrity? Yes. 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 Okay. You've, um, you've met the criteria we're looking for on that. Um, any, any specific questions related to the, the materials that Heidi is proposing here in terms of hardware, lighting? wood, um, hardscape features that we have here that are being proposed. We do plan to match the field stones and the floors that's at the house that you can see for our stone walls. This is awesome. Looks like all the hardscape is natural, natural stone and... Yes. Yeah. Mahogany decking. Yep. It looks like part of the foundation of that small addition is also stone, is that? It is, and um, if I can, I'm going to save it and reuse, reuse. it. Yeah. I didn't go into the crawl space, so I don't know if it's, if it's a, more of a veneer, but it looks pretty thick. I'm not sure if that's something. No, I think it's, I think it's like it's solid. natural solid stone, okay. yeah. So I'm hoping so. when we when we remove that that we can save that stockpile and use it for the, the new your, your new foundation will be cast in place. Yeah. Yeah. But the stone walls that we're proposing will hide right. it. I so see. It's it. really not visible. Yep. And we're very close to braid, so it's not like there's much there. So on, on the on the left elevation where you have a new window in the original volume towards the rear corner board, the existing corner board, that window would be new in a true divided light? Yeah. I think I'd want it to be true divided light so it matches the others right. in that room. Okay. Which window are we talking about? I it's the one um give it away on my pictures, but it's basically, it's like right at the addition. It's the okay. one that I added right there. On the right hand side? No. These are all existing. I can show you when that's okay. Okay. this is existed. I do have to say, there is a first on this project. I've never had nine letters from neighbors <laughs> approving. It was actually 12. I just did the well, count after you asked my guess. I've never seen that. We've never hit past five, maybe. <laughs> So it's just really nice that this is such a, a warm neighborhood that is so closely connected. Yeah. Um, so I thought that was pretty cool. Mm -hmm. Do you want to um, do you want to share those letters or? I've given you 
I believe eight last time, and uh -huh. I can email the last four. I mean, we can um, we, we can enter those nice. into the into the record if sure. I, uh, um, yeah. <laughs> so I don't know if I need to go through all the names of the the abutters or neighbors at this point, but we can we can make sure that those are, those are noted. Yeah, I, I, which is really nice. You know, you don't always see that. We can ask. After the fact. Is that right? Or keep it on the file. Or keep it on the, the file. Right. Would you like Melissa to read the names from the emails? Um, you know, if you if you do, um, if, you if, have to if you have them, just yeah. just so we have the names, the addresses. Do you have that? I don't have all their addresses okay. in front of me, so I don't know if that doesn't help. But that's fine. Names. Okay. I have. I can say the streets and the. Okay, so I have yeah. um, Ronnie and Bill Scott of Mill Lane. Uh, Kate and Sean Green of Mill Lane, Jeff Alexander and John Pletsky of Mill Lane, uh, Billy and Christine Mira of Mill Lane, Audra and Trip Boyle of Mill Lane, um, Kyle and Will Tollefson of Main Street, Sarah and John Carolyn of Main Street, um, Allison Skidmore of Main Street, Cecilia Walker of Main Street, Bridget and Greg St. Pierre of Main Street, uh, Christy Sawyer of Main Street. So that's 11. That's 11. But I, I just thought that was really nice. Did you show them the project before you, I did. We before we, you brought it in here? We or? shared the plans with everybody um, nice. and you know wanted to give them all a chance to see them and process them before we came in front of all of you in case they had any concerns. So, um, and you know, I mean, I think I had like two neighbors I didn't hear back from, so. Okay, great. Nice. Anything else? I'm I can make out, a motion. I'm, like, I'm looking down this way. <laughs> now, one of you guys. Um, the plans I have are dated June 9th. Is, yes. Are those the latest? I revised them for the site visit last Saturday. Okay. All right. So those show the, the updated. Yes. Um, let me just make sure. Right. Okay. Of course. Uh, I'd like to make a motion for certificate of appropriateness 7 Main Street. Plans dated. June 9th, 2018. These are um, elevations of all four sides. A2-1, A2-2, and then the accompanying packet, uh, which shows finishes uh, both in landscaping for, for uh, walls as well as um, walkways. Uh, decking materials, clapboard. Um, let's see, all trim to match original structure, materials in kind, windows on front elevation and left elevation of original structure to be restored. Uh, windows in the addition, all wood, simulated divided light, styles and rails to match in proportion to yes. original volume, um, all wood shutters, so you're going to get rid of those plastic ones, yes. thank you. Yes. Okay, all wood shutters. <clears throat> What am I missing? Windows. Windows? Yep, okay. Restoration of the front and the left elevation, original volume. Demolition of existing rear addition. Of the sunroom. Yeah. Sun right, Demo of just the sunroom. Oh, and then there's an entry there in the back as well, right? Yeah. The that would go as well. Yeah, and right. all the casement windows. And right, the right. Are so dem demolition of the sunroom and um, I, a rear portico entry. Uh, you know, applicant has uh, supplied pictures of the side and the rear to be right. It'll be impacted. Anything else? Okay. Uh, do we have a second? Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Good. Thank you very much. Thank, Thank you. you. So what's the deal with the flag? It's flathead.
Oh, it is? Andrea yeah. got us all flags. Isn't that nice? Andrea. Celebrate this historic. Yeah, I'm half German. I don't know these things. <laughs> no, historic. And you said that look at you like, you know what I mean? Sorry. Situate hasn't kind of done their duty. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Um, next up, we have. Hi, Romina. Three seventeen Main Street. Yes. Hello. Hi. How are you? Oh, no, <laughs> no, don't be. Apologizes he couldn't come today. He had an okay. event, and uh, but he prepped me. <laughs> oh, okay. So. So thank you for coming in. No, thank you. Yeah. So the way we left it um, with with him last time mm -hmm. was that um, we we approved the uh, the application that you submitted for, yes, thank for the you. house itself. Yeah. And he was going to come back in with a hardscape. Yes. Um, what you have here. I know there's a lot of work going on in your house. Right yeah, now, so. we're so excited. So thank you, Good. too, because it helps us get through it quicker with Good. the kids in there. Good. Um, so do you want to run through what you're... Uh, I mean, he just basically told me that we're doing all um, natural materials. So we're doing cobblestone and granite. Um, I guess aprons on, on the driveway, cobblestones all the way around it, um, granite steps, uh, the patio in front of our front door will be um, granite as well and we have asphalt on both sides and then stone in the middle um, okay. I'm not sure if you needed more I, so we have a um, we have a drawing that's in front of us with the um, with the property okay. um, he also submitted a um, uh, a shed yes so that um, was the other thing that we wanted yeah, to ask about um, and there'll, there'll probably be some questions related to that okay um, and am I missing anything else that you just know? the railing the ra oh and the railing the railing okay and that was going to go where on the f where the granite steps are on the front of the house okay just for just off the front door yeah yeah okay and you're gonna leave the other railing that's, that's kind of there Yes, the one that's around the driveway. Yes. Okay. All right. Okay. Questions? Um. So with the shed, yeah. we didn't know um, if it would be if we would be able to do all red cedar shingles for the roof, which would match the roof of the house mm -hmm. and the siding, or if you prefer us to match the color of the house and have it be what is that clapboard? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, so I didn't know if there was a preference or a difference or. Um, well, let's um, we'll talk a little about the shed. Um, okay. It's, it's a basic. Uh, it's a basic drawing here. Um, yeah, I think he tried to keep the same lines of the roof yeah. of the house, and the windows would be facing the outside, and the door would be on the side. So what you'd see from the street, I think, is the windows. Yeah. The two windows. The two windows. Um, I, I just had a question related to the placement of it. Um, sure. Is it, it's just off the front to the right, is that? I think it was, he was telling me because of our property line, it had to be, you know, 12 feet off this or 15, so I think that's where, and the septic, so I think that's, we'd love to put it somewhere else, yeah. but I think it was all the other regulations that he had to put it there. Yeah. Um, generally we see, we see sheds behind you know yes I would have loved that <laughs> and you put them you put them out back I know you have a sloped line well, I, that's there. another thing so I, I mean we would love to and then I yeah. think there's a wetland or something back there so I argued with him on that one because it kills some of our parking space as well yeah. I even was thinking maybe more to the side but again our property line he was saying it had to be a, a certain amount of yeah. uh, a certain feet away from yeah. that. We just usually see these auxiliary structures kind of towards the rear and it sounds like you're that's your it's kind of like a, too, but it's only where we could do it. So we don't have any storage. So it just we were trying to make it <coughs> just to put bikes and yeah. you know um, extra. Is there um, is there a way to um, is there a way to attach it to the rear of the building somehow or um, um, or just have it back there? I th I would I I think we have the steps <coughs> where the driveway is. 
is the septic right there. So I don't think you're technically allowed to put anything right there. And then it really slopes down in the back. And I don't think, and I think you can't do anything within 50 feet of the wetlands. Mm -hmm. So I think that was the major problem. I mean, we would have loved to have it yeah. further back. And if maybe I can go back to him and see if there's an alternative. But he made it seem like that's our only option. Mm -hmm. I can ask him again. On the left side of the building, is that also? That's like a, it drops too, so there's like a deck right there, and it, it pretty much all, everything on the back goes straight down. Um, and I think Conway Realty owns to the, to the left of it. Are you, are you within 50 feet of the wetlands, your, your house itself, is that? That I don't know, but I do, well, there was nothing on, um, officially, on Map GIS, like when we went to buy the house, but it's clearly a wetland back there. Um, or some things back there that's wet. And uh, we were gonna have a, we were, that's why we kept the, um, the house within what existed. Um, and so I think we we're gonna try to get a wetland scientist out there to let us know what we can do and what we can't do out there. But I'm pretty sure that we can't put a structure back there. Because um, um. it really dips to, like where the, um, that little garage part on the side, yeah. So when you walk down, it goes sh straight down. Right here, it, it dips right here? Yeah. So you wouldn't necessarily be able to... Connect it? Connect it, something like that there, maybe? Maybe, like, would you have to do a bigger foundation on the bottom to bring it up? Because it just... Um, yeah. So, like, this Instead goes... Instead of having it up here, maybe having it over here as a small... I think that's where the septic is right now. Okay. So that was a big problem. So we have to access that, obviously, um, every couple of years. So that was like right at the end, on the right, right there. Okay. Like where it says lawn, it's right in there. Mr. Chairman, um, there is a, a local, um, so it is permissible if you, if you reduce the size of the shed so it's 64 squ square feet or less, you can be within five feet of your lot line. Oh. So you may want to investigate options available to you if you're within five feet and you change the structure to an eight by eight or whatever gets you 64 square feet. So but if we it, reduce it to 64 square feet, we could be five feet off. You can be five feet, correct. So provided, so provided you're not interfering with the... There's an access easement right here, it looks like. Is that still oh relevant, yeah. this access easement? Let's call that on the plan here. Like so that was so we have we share I think that driveway is that what you mean with the oh, multi unit the it's a multi unit oh, yeah. house right there so we share that driveway we probably couldn't move into that zone potentially I'd be happy to move it if I mean it wasn't like that was our we had to put it there no, I, I just felt like it was more just within the regulations mm -hmm. we're trying to figure out a solution for you um, <laughs> could you have one could you have two eight by eight sheds back there I mean I, no it's one accessory building one accessory yeah. is the limit. I mean I'm just wondering if there's if there's room off the back where they could you know add on here somehow um, it's not encroaching on the uh, the setback I believe that the the drop is precipitous yeah there's like a whole other floor underneath that garage level Is you really like you really have down. to walk all the way back down there. Um. Um, some additional questions about the the hardscaping. So let's start um, to for a point of reference. If you if you come out the front door there, um, there is there a is there a stone wall immediate and then it's it, there's a drop down to lawn. Exactly. Okay, and then the, I see the granite wall. Mm -hmm. um, so towards, if you get to the granite wall, that's going to be high enough so that uh, you can support, it says stone. Right. Is that a crushed stone? Crushed stone. And so is that, is that a, a means uh, for a vehicle to get through? Exactly, okay. yeah. So that way we could use both sides of the driveway and kind of go in and out because it's just such a busy street and those two stop signs were right there. So we just felt like it was a little dangerous. So we okay. wanted to move it. So your day. your proposal is the shed is up on that parking area, right? So like I said, so it's elevated. It's elevated, okay. and it's, we lose one of those parking spots if we put a shed up there. I see. Okay. And again, we don't have any place for storage, so we just wanted something to be able to put the extra 
our extra stuff. You know when you go down the stairs, I'm just trying to remember when we, we were there a month or so ago to visit, mm -hmm. you know you go down the stairs on the left-hand side, you go all the way down, mm -hmm. and there's that room way at the bottom. I mm -hmm. think it used to be laundry or something down in there. I think it was nothing, yeah. It was nothing. Is there any room in there for storage? or? Well, we're putting um, like our utilities down there and okay. just space the, our, um, for the kids down there, with the bathroom <coughs> down there. Mm -hmm. um, I think that was the original plan when we thought we could put an addition to the house, mm -hmm. but now because we're just in that house, yeah. uh, we, we put different plans in there. Mm. Yeah, my, my concern is this shed being in the front is now going to dwarf what is a, a minimal addition on the house now. Okay. Um, has, um, so I guess this, this you know, going to um, Lonnie and talking about maybe she can offer some insight. And she's the uh, runs the okay. yeah, on the wetlands. Maybe she might be able to help with um, with some of that. Um, it would be great if you could somehow get this towards the rear. I just maybe there's you know, maybe there, in certain cases they've they've allowed it. Um, it's just not it's, it's not for our our commission to decide. Right, exactly. She's gonna, she's gonna understand that better than we we will. So you're saying one option might be if we shrink it, we can move it over? Closer to the lot line, sure, within five feet. And you would prefer it to be further from the house? In the rear. And back. Yeah. Okay. Yep. Further to the rear. But you're, I mean, you're still going to need access to that, you know, which is, with that lot, it's going to be, it sounds like it's going to be a challenge. Right. So, like, if you want to have, you know, um, let's say, for instance, um, I don't know, bikes or a lawnmower or stuff like that, you need to bring it all the way up. Right. You know, so it's... That was another thing, too. We're just thinking, like, bringing it in up and down, up and down. Yep, up and down the stairs or... And there's, there's not, like, a ramp or anything, right? It's just it's just stairs. Yeah. yeah. So it's... Like I said, from, from the driveway, it just, like, whoosh, dips right down. So I want to say it's, like, six, six, seven steps down. Yeah. And, I mean, we're not committed to the shape of the shed or anything so we're open to changing that too if that helps I don't know if it is there anything if, if it's just bikes and lawnmowers that the weight of it is so light that you could if you had some kind of access to a septic you could build it on top of a septic if you don't do that it, I'm mm -hmm. sure you could but I don't know how the town would respond to something like that you have to typically be 10 feet away from the tank okay Sometimes they allow you a little closer, um, but this doesn't have a foundation, so that you might have some exceptions there. I don't, I don't know. Romina, what we can do is if um, we can arrange a time for you to come in, mm -hmm. and then I, we can go to um, the Board of Health okay. and talk about the septic. We can go to um, zoning. We can go to um, conservation. Bill and the building department, and the building department. Kno knows about the five five foot setback. Yeah. So we, so we can it, okay. get those questions answered. Okay. For you. Just so I can, so the issue is more you don't like the location so close to the street, or you're saying it's going to make it look, it's going to change the scope of the project. Yeah. In, in general, auxiliary buildings should be to the side or to the rear of of, of a house. Um, we just don't have. Um, we just don't have uh, instances where these buildings are in front. I just, I. Just what? Sorry. In front of the house. In front of the yeah, house. We okay. just don't. <coughs> trying to think of a situation where there's one that I can point you to, but I, I haven't seen the one. One next to Virginia. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Not to emulate. Oh <laughs> uh, yeah, that one. <laughs> and the the, propor the proportions. Um, this is, I think for the lot, this is rather large. This is going to be... I, yeah, again, just because we don't have a basement or, or garages, yeah. like we just, you know, all the, you know, how the kids just accumulate things. It, like I said, we're, we're open to anything. We just, we're looking for storage. Just is, it, that, is it just fair to say if it is put around back, it's out of our jurisdiction, so therefore? Yeah, I mean, if it's not visible from the street, right. I mean, you could, you know, you don't have to come, come okay. to us. You <laughs> just... You I just fear that conservation it'll be more of that issue um, technically not being able to put something back there see what they say okay yeah they will help once Andrew we find out what your restrictions are okay then sure. it might yeah they'll be particular about full foundations and things like that near okay. wetlands and you're not doing anything like that oh okay I see what you're saying 
I'd be happy I get another parking spot back. <laughs> okay. Um, okay, so then I don't have to ask, so if, if it's, if we're putting it in the back, then does it matter where, whether we match the house? Do I have to come back for that in terms of color or what we want to do with it? Um, I, I think you'll probably want to just, you know, match the existing house and maybe it's, maybe it's shingled, maybe it's clapboard, um, okay. the roof. You have, um, is it asphalt shingles so in the roof? they're going to use cedar. And so the question was, can the, should be entirely cedar? Could it be all sh cedar? Or should it match shingles the color on the, the side as well as on the roof? Or should the roof, um, should there be clapboard on the sides? So um, I think traditionally sheds are shingled structures. Okay. With, with Great. shingled on the roof. I mean, I mean I've, I've seen some Just that say are natural. Nice if it's na natural, okay, perfect. With the one exception is the roof. It could could be asphalt, if they so wish. Correct. Yeah. I think we were looking to do both the shed and well, also because it was in the front of the house, okay. we were going to do wood as well. But um, that would be good. That'd be great. I'd like to do all wood, so just a, a little contrast from the house. Yeah, I mean, you typically see what white cedar on the, on the uh, sides and uh, red yeah. cedar roofs. Um, okay. This is usually not my my area, so. No, you're asking all the right questions. Right, you're doing um, great. And then I, was, I don't think on the plans there, I wanted to put like a little sconce up for lighting. But again, should I go through first to see the location and then we can come back with that? On the shed. You're on the shed, that. sorry. Yeah, yeah, on the shed. Like where the two windows are in the front. I just mm -hmm. wanted to put like a, one of those mm -hmm. shed, uh, sconce that comes out yeah. just for lighting. Yeah, and again, if we can't see it, it's okay. It's okay. It's okay. All right. So Great. can't see it from a public way, you know, walking on the sidewalk. Okay. If it's kind of down in there, then okay. you're okay. Perfect. I can work with you. Okay. <laughs> Sounds good. All right, so we'll start from, so maybe next week or something. Sure. Okay. Yeah, you know we're chucking the bikes up and down, so I just want to put them somewhere yes. in there. Oh, totally. We understand. <laughs> Especially in the summer and I hear you. The beach stuff, the beach chair, you know, all that stuff. We just don't have anywhere to put it right now. So. We'll figure something out. Okay. So, Great. Mr. Chairman, are you saying that once we figure out what <coughs> restrictions there are and a location, uh, we've eliminated certain locations and um, <coughs> honed in on a location, do you want um, the Magners to come back? I think if it's, if it's visible from a public way, yes. Okay. If it's um, if it's not, then we don't need to see it. Okay. Now, what happens if they say, okay, it can't be here, can't be because of all the setbacks, and what happens next? Um, I think then, I think you should come back then, and if you if you really want this shed in that position, I think we're going to have to vote on it. Okay. And maybe some drawings that sh depict it in the entire context. Yeah, I just. Um, and it may, it may be that the board doesn't just does not get comfortable with it, okay. um, and maybe some members will. Okay. But I think it'll be, you know, we'll just have to see. Is it something too that we can ask what, if you have examples of what would be better? Well, I guess let's just see if we could put it in the back first yeah, let's and see that first. Go. Got it. Okay. Or think about like um, the shed was rather big at this at the way it looks right now. Oh, okay. So. If, if an 8 by 8 shed or a 64 foot shed is too small for what you need, is there something in between so okay. that this looks big, but That's we could large. scale it back a little bit and we could lower it a little bit, maybe okay. it doesn't look as big. Okay, um, sure. And that might be something that um, Yeah, because we don't really need the height of it to. anyway, so, okay. Yeah. All right. Mr. Chairman, should we vote on everything but the shed? I think, I think we should. I think we should if, if there are no other questions on, on the hardscape plan, what they have planned um, to do around the house and the railing. Would that be you, Ben? Um, Making the motion? I could do that, yeah. <laughs> I have some additional questions. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Go ahead. Ben. Okay, on, in the landscape plan it says granite wall cap. Is this a, um, is this a, like a rock fa face granite? Is this a cut faced granite? I, there's, I, there's no pictures accompanying my packet. Um, is this yeah, it's on the top of the wall. I think that's a cut granite. It is a cut. Yes. Okay. Um, uh, is the wall? It kind of dips underneath. 
the so it's like the street level and it goes yeah. below it. I want to so say maybe it's like four feet. Down yeah, the yeah, exactly. Level, exactly. And everything else is up. Yeah, so like if you were like just from the street, you could pretty much just see the top two floors. You don't yeah. see that. It yeah, right. so you look at that. The walls, the, the wall that. is existing already, and I think they just want to continue it. Oh, you're maintaining that wall height. I see. Maintaining the wall height, so that my understanding. So that's not being raised there, or anything. Is that it's not. No. Nope. You're not putting a fence there or anything. No, uh, just okay. private hedges for privacy. I see. Right. So, so Ben, if if it has a granite cap on top, should we ask to have it stone uh, natural faced? So that well, it doesn't I'm, become a polished granite? I've seen the granite apron, and that's all, that's all natural rock face. Yep. And so it would be nice if you could pull that element into some of these other, obviously your cobblestone apron will be similar to that, and also pull that into your granite wall cap. So you're saying the, you want that more of a, to not match. a polished look, to, to match, match the cobblestone. Yeah, I think correct. that was the idea. Okay, so yeah, not absolutely. A, it, it won't be a cut. cut. Oh, sorry, yeah, okay. no. Okay. Rock face. So natural to match. Let's we'll just say match the yeah the rest yeah. Of the exactly. yeah 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 exactly. It was you're creating harm, harmony granite. in the granite. Exactly. Yes. Okay. Absolutely. And same with the granite steps all, uh, near the patio. Yep. Those would be a, a rock face. Exactly. Yeah. Okay. Yep. And the front the front steps. That's the. That's the it's over there. It's over here. That's where the new entrance is. Hey, anything else? <clears throat> All right. Um, Somebody would like to make a motion for. Uh, 317 Main Street for the uh, the hard I can do that for the hardscape <laughs> <laughs> for the hardscaping plan excluding the um, excluding the shed. Um, I'd like to make a motion for a certificate of appropriateness for 317 Main Street. Let's see plans plans dated. Um, May 29th, that's the application, that's executable, okay. Plans dated uh, May 29th, uh, lands landscape as drawn uh, in layout plan. Uh, let's see, granite, um, granite wall cap, granite steps, apron, uh, rock faced, finish, plants, are we in the, do we get into the, no, no, we're not going to discuss plants, okay. Um, pavement is going to be asphalt over on the right hand side and on the left hand side, okay, with the stone, the crushed stone in between. Um, shed is not included, mm -hmm. okay. What am I missing? Oh, uh, the railings oh, yeah. in the packet, an iron, iron rail. Cobble stove apron. Cobblestone apron, iron rail both left and right of uh, the front stairs. And it looks like a reconfiguration of the front stairs, so you come straight out. Yeah, exactly. It was just easier. And it allowed us to have a little bit more driveway space. It right. Was just narrow there. Okay. Okay, so we have a second. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? All right. Thanks, Romina. All thank right, you. thank you. Good job. I'm making yeah. him come next time. <laughs> <laughs> That's good job. All right. So, uh, I'll just reach out to you. Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. This looks like Jim in front of the garage. <laughs> Is that him? <laughs> <laughs> All right. It really does. I'm just weird about that. We just watch and everything. Very vain. See you later. Have a good night. So, um, Mr. Kearney is next. Let me see if he's outside. You know, I'm wondering if we could, I mean, if it was like a garage there, something a little more substantial, 
it might look a little different. What, what's that? The, the, instead of a shed. Instead of a shed, I mean, a garage might look more, I don't know, something that... Well, there is, there is that addition there. I don't know. I got to go back and look at the... And maybe they, maybe they can work with that septic a little bit. I don't know. They've really created a front yard, so it makes it, it makes it even more difficult. A shed in the front yard. Um, I spoke with Mr. Kearney today, and he's uh, he should be here. And um, Mr. Bickford is coming for the informal at eight fifteen. So, in the interim, I do have a question. For the commission, I was speaking with Alan Peralt today, and um, they're looking at some minor changes to the um, um, the bathhouse um, that we approved on the the beach. the beach, the bathing beach. We uh, we didn't approve finishes. We did. We, we approved. Did. Uh, yes, we did. That maybe that was before you, <laughs> or maybe you weren't no, there. I was, I was here maybe for the first. <coughs> oh, okay. All right. So oh. yes, we did approve everything, and so there may be a change. Um, they were looking at the ePay for the decking, and it's quite expensive. So they were um, thinking about using teak instead. Would that be a reason for them to come back in, or can they make that change? Is, will this be let? It will gray. Mm -hmm. Well, over time they're going to look very similar if they're just going to let them gray. I'm I it's not it's natural wood. It's not pressure treated wood. Or it's not pressure or treated. They're going to use the teak. Dimensionally, it's the same. Yes. So I can get more details when the time comes. They're just. Um, he was just asking um, to understand what their limitations might be. Right. So is there a difference between teak and mahogany? I don't think they considered mahogany. Um, in terms of wear and that I can't answer. Price. I think that's pretty expensive too. It's pretty expensive, yeah. Although well, probably less than ePay. Yeah, yeah. the ePay is more the, the more expensive typically, but there are a lot of different mahoganies. So. All right. I'm sure they oh. they looked at mahogany if they jumped to teak. Yeah, they were just looking at the the costs and um, trying to figure out how they might be able to mitigate some of that. Does, does Teak need a, I mean, that's going to be a high traffic area. That needs an, an annual, or maybe more than more than annual coats to, uh, in order to preserve it. Um, I think for foot, for foot traffic, Teak can be unforgiving if you don't have shoes or flip-flops or something on. You could get a sliver. But right. uh, it's easily treatable. Isn't it? Um, is it pretty slippery? No, no, no. It it grains up. It will grain up right. and create I'll a nonce. I'll just um, I'll ask them for additional details, and they may prefer just to come in and and present what they have. Yeah. It's not imminent. They were just trying to look at their budget. So. But um, I guess to answer your question, Andrea, if they wanted to go in the direction of teak, would we? Um, would would uh, would we want to have more questions about it, or are you guys are you guys comfortable? I, I agree with Mike. It's a natural product. It, it's gonna they're gonna let it weather. So I I wouldn't need. Okay. Wouldn't think we would need to see them. I remember right. Were they also thinking about putting cedar shingles on the roof? Yes, and. Um, so would they maybe change that to asphalt? We gave them, um, we said they could do either. Oh, okay. It was, uh, they were talking about the cedar. That was what um, their ideal was. It's just if they were looking to <coughs> save, save money. money. Yeah. I think they're looking at everything. Okay. Well, I don't know where Mr. Kearney is. So, are we able to review the application without the applicant here? Technically, no. No. Okay. Commercial break. Commercial break. <laughs> um, are we live? Yeah, we're live.
So, I don't know. I think. Don't even say no. Nice of you to ask. Um, so maybe Virginia, you can just fill us in on. Um, wasn't there some activity at the uh, society this afternoon? Yes, um, we had a bricks and pavers party um, for the first phase of the uh, installation of bricks and pavers off the um, porch. Uh, there were about 200 people. Um, it was a great time. Um, people um, looking for their bricks and pavers. <laughs> we had little maps and oh. a, a directory for um, access and so forth. And um, it was quite fun. And uh, um, the society is getting some interesting touches. We had champagne with little raspberries in the bottom. Oh, mm. that's um, <laughs> a contemporary approach. <laughs> And, uh, you know, the ballroom was um, open and people could see the exhibit and so forth. So it was, um, um, people had a good time. Yeah. How many pavers in the end were, were, were uh, stamped with? There were probably about 20 pavers, 25 pavers. There were probably um, 125, 150 bricks. Mm -hmm. And there'll be phase two. Um, phase two is opened up. Mm. You know, very interesting, um, I don't know what to make of it, but 80% of the people who bought bricks were not members of the society. Mm. Isn't that interesting? Mm. That's yeah. really very interesting, I mm. thought. You know. uh, if I recall, they were, was it $100? Yeah, for the for bricks and um, brick? 1000 for the pavers. Mm -hmm. Are you sending out mailings to... Uh to, throughout the town, or how did you? Initially, we did, mm -hmm. and probably for phase two, we will again. Yeah. Good. It was very popular. Yeah, a lot it was of a great. People wanted to. Yeah. yeah. It was a great idea. Involved. Yeah. And so, if we wanted to to be alert for phase two, what would we look in the paper and watch? You for can, the... or you could call Virginia McLaughlin okay. um, and tell her that you're interested, and she can give you some information. That would be. 781-749-7721. Meet our new marketing representative. No, it's good to, to announce the number. Yeah, it is. It is. <laughs> so. So there's a map where you see you can find your brick? It's, not, it's, it's a directory um, and an index. <laughs> yeah. Gives you a general idea. Yeah. yeah, and we had little stations saying which section you were in. You know, really make it, it was like a, a cemetery. Make really. it into a treasure. <laughs> yeah, it really. Is. I, was say. Mm. I like a treasure hunt. Make a treasure hunt. Where you only get a little, you know, one <laughs> piece of information, and you have to figure out the rest. You know? Right. So that could be a great fundraiser. Yeah. <laughs> <clears throat> Other than that, I have nothing to say. So <laughs> we're just At what point do you, would we table an application? Well, when our next applicant comes in, um, and hopefully Peter will be on his way shortly. And just, just by way of background for um, the, the informal meeting, um, Peter Bickford is working on the house at 64 School Street, corner of corner of Stud is it Stoddard in school? Studley. Studley in school. Yes, and so we this was something we reviewed last January, well in January six months ago, and um, we approved uh, in addition to us to a small cape. Oh, Gretchen mm -hmm. Bates? Yes. Okay. And so um, there are some changes that um, the owner would like to make. And so um, Peter will be coming to talk to us about those changes on an informal basis, knowing that you may be able to provide him with a reaction, but um, the applicant does have to come back 
in July for a, a proper hearing. So uh, he may get some indication from you and um, whether or not to move forward, risking the fact that at a public hearing, a full public hearing, <coughs> those things might not fly. But I think the project is at a point now where they need to have some indication of how they can move forward with some things. So. Is this the small kid? Yes. Yes. Mm -hmm. And um, I, you approved an addition to the side. Yeah. And then also to the rear. The uh, foundation's in. Mm -hmm. Oh, good. I haven't been by. That's uh, that's the extent of it, and the, the demolition of what was there before has happened. <coughs> the project's in full swing. Okay. Um, I uh, Justin submitted. I'm talking now about our session um, with um, town council. And Justin uh, had one question that he posed. If you have others that you would like to um, provide, and I think the, the purpose of this discussion, again, is, is really broad. Um, and I think um, town council will just be here to um, give us some good guidance on our <coughs> procedures. And so, as I said, this type of training will be done for all the permitting boards. Um, we just happen to be somewhat unique in terms of our evaluation process um, as opposed to the other permitting boards. So it's, uh, we're getting special accommodations. I think if we can get um, John some talking points, some discussion points ahead of time just so he could he could prep a little bit so he knows mm -hmm. research. How, how to um, how to guide us through uh, and make recommendations for us in the future so we can, mm -hmm. we can um, you know, tighten things up as best we can. Um, so if you have anything that, that, that you'd like to forward along to, uh, to Andrea, we can get those to John. Ahead of time, and that's not to say you can't ask questions during the session obviously because more things will come up as we begin to discuss um, but I think um, I know he's going to go over our um, findings our sheet with us and um, so if you have any particular questions about that you mean our worksheet yes the worksheet exactly So just shoot them to me this week if you have anything and I can <coughs> uh, forward them to him. I think he has, um, Hans, Hans and I had a conversation with um, John Coughlin um, several months ago at which this was discussed and so I think he has a pretty good invitation or in in inclination as to what he wants to cover. Yeah, and some of the changes we've already implemented, um, but again, this is a um, you know the goal here is to um, to um, operate with a um, with some incremental consistency and in how we how we review each of the projects and some of that is with the worksheets, but also just when you're you know discuss discussing and asking questions and. And when we're deliberating, um, it's just to have have that that added level of consistency. I think would go a long way. And then, um, you know, just to, to um, you know to use the resource materials that we all have, you know, such as you know the the handbook that Andrea has put together for all of us, and as well as some of the um, other reference materials we use to incorporate that as best you can into um, into discussion. I think it goes a long way with. Um, just uh, you know, 
making the making the best review of each application. So, you know, those are the questions. I think that's that's how he'll guide us. Mm -hmm. um, but if you have specific questions about about that, I think he's he'd be a good person to ask. I know a lot of the material that we um, you know we go through in the applications we go through um, can be can be subjective. But if you could make it um, more consistent and more objective, um, as objective as possible, I think um, I think go, that goes a long way. Which was, I think, the purpose of the worksheet yep. to enable us to um, focus in a similar direction, each of us. So. Well, it's Peter. Hi, Peter. Hello. Hey. <laughs> Come on in. <laughs> Not at all. How you doing? Good. How are you? Good. Thanks for coming in. Uh, we discussed a little bit of background to explain why you're here tonight. Okay. And, uh, so, so if you have the original plans, hand those out. Andrea, do we need to do anything with the previous application before we start on this? Do, do we need to have a, a vote, or do we just do we just continue it automatically? Are, you, are we? Oh, for Al's, attorney, yes. I think we'll just, we'll just continue. Okay. okay. Thanks. How's your own schedule tonight? So uh, my name is Peter Bickford, and I'm representing the um, Bateses on School Street on an application that you approved, not sure when, but In it January. was approved. So looking for some minor changes. Um, get the foundation in, and we were going over the plans last week, and they requested that um, I come in and ask you if you think the changes are prudent. I think they're minor, but I'll let you guys decide. Okay. Uh, I think the easiest way, if, if you open your plans to the um, exterior elevations, and the first one is the uh, north elevation on the side. So AE 2.1. A A 2.2. A 2.2. Yeah. Oh, you know what? Maybe uh, your plans are a little bit different. Yeah. Here. Oh, wait a minute. No. no that's right. Last page. Actually, it's, it's the uh, elevation of the house coming from the center down School Street. Okay. Towards Studley Road. And what, they'd, uh, what was approved was a six foot um, French door, patio type door. This is the bottom drawing. Uh, top, uh, top, top side, drawing. side or north elevation. No, I think he's, you were talking about this one, right, yep. Peter? The bottom yes. drawing. Oh. Uh, no, what's the end? The top is the right. north, this one. and the bottom is the east. Um, on, the, on the top elevation. Okay. Yeah. Sorry. What they'd like to do is change. They thought that was too much glass, and the the second change has also to do with that elevation. But what they'd like to do is change that six-foot patio door to a traditional nine-light single door, oh. three-foot. So reduce it by half. And the nine-light you know, nine door would be true divided lights, um, three wide, three high, with two panels below. So that's one change I'd like to make. And if you go drop down to the next elevation, which would be the east elevation, you'll see there's a 12-foot glass unit mm -hmm. there, and they thought that also was too much glass, so they'd like to reduce that to a 6-foot French door, just eliminate the two, two three-foot side lights. 
no change in the um, layout of the glass, just reduce it by half the width. So these drawings reflect the original proposal, and you're just pointing out you're going to make this smaller and that smaller. Exactly. So those are the two changes in that, that elevation that they'd like to make. And if you go to the last one is the front elevation. There are three kitchen windows to the extreme right hand side of that elevation where the addition's going. This is uh, west, right? West elevation? Front. The front. West elevation, uh, 8 2. Front elevation, the west, yes. Um, <laughs> and you see three um, smaller windows that are over the kitchen sink. Yep. And yes. the layout that was approved was a uh, 3 over 3. What they'd like to do is just change that to 3 over 1 to be consistent with all the rest of the w existing windows in the house. They thought that the that the um, 3 over 3 got a little too linear. It, it doesn't look that way in the drawing, but when you um, when we showed them the, the layout from, from the window manufacturer, it looked a little too linear, and we all thought that the 3 over th 1 would be more consistent with the look on the front of the house. We're looking at 82.1, is that correct? Yes. Yeah. Right. Okay. So okay. Those, those are the three changes. At the bottom portion of the drawing, right-hand side. Mm -hmm. um, I'm, I'm trying to recall what um, the discussion on those three windows. I think I think we, we recommended those because it would offer some differentiation from the main. Is that is that the direction we went into? With I seem to remember we had various options right. in dormer form there as well as a, right. yeah. a bump out maybe a bay or a box bay with a roof. Right. There was a lot of dormer on discussion. The roof. Yeah. Yeah, they eliminated that. Yeah, there were three there were three options I think is what was dis discussed and we went with this because it was a um, lower key if you will. It didn't it didn't trump the main volume. Did we talk about the specifics of the window? I don't recall the No, I don't did. remember discussing the lights. Yeah, it, did. Was more it was going to be up the It was more dormer window. versus window and not the actual, you know, is it three over three or three over one? I don't think we commented on that. Is, is the size in this going to be similar? Just just the glass? The size of the window, Peter? Is, the si is it going to be the same, just the yeah, same size? size? Yeah. Okay. I just wanted to eliminate the, the, the uh, three lights on the bottom. Okay. One light. <clears throat> I, I mean, I bet the consistency sounds like that would be a positive way to go. That's what we thought. And the other two, the doors in the back, one of them you probably wouldn't see from a public way anyways, the 12 foot wide. And then could you even really see the other one from the public way? Just sort of as you go? You really Stubbly. can't see it. Can you? The only Stubbly? one maybe would Stubbly. be the, the reducing the, the, the four doors with the, or the doors with the two lights. Mm -hmm. That may be the only one you can see. You think? From from, uh, from Studley? Yeah. Yeah. You really you really I don't think so. I, there's I, a fence on that there's side. There's a fence there. You Studley, I don't think they'll be able you to see, see anything at oh. all. And there's a lot of shrubbery right there at the moment. And there's a fence. There's, there's a, a six fence. foot fence. Yeah. Shrubbery. Yeah. Yeah. Well it's an informal entry. We're we're doing a, a nine light which is also informal, it, it, the swap makes sense. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> I, I think the simplicity, the changes you propose in terms of simplicity in light of the house is uh, quite appealing. Yeah, it, 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 it was everyone's feeling when, when we, we, we actually tore the old addition off and then we looked at what was left. Everybody thought, boy, that's a lot of glass. It takes the whole wall up. Mm -hmm. um, so that, that was a reasoning. It's yeah. fairly simple. It's not, um, it's hard to place not for any other reason. And it opened, it, it just seemed to open the back up too much. Yeah. Yeah. 
And it's a, I don't know, it's it's a small yard. It's not it's not a big yard. There's not a lot of view out there. So, I'm just asking you if if you would approve it and. If you feel that That's there are minor modifications, then you can just approve it tonight, and then I'll ask um, um, the architect to provide revised drawings. I, I would agree with Virginia. I think this is definitely an improvement. I agree. It's a point the changes. <clears throat> Do we need an application, Andrea, for this? No, these uh, just to modify this. Um, I think it's like field changes, right, for the most part. Yeah. So okay. I think we gave um, Mrs. Bates a lot of options to begin with so that she had some flexibility in terms yeah. of what she wanted to. Yeah, and she was talking about getting more more light into the house. Mm -hmm. I think that's the direction why we, we went with this because of it just, it was just a tighter, given the, the work on the next door. Just, just trying to get maximize the light, so. Mm -hmm. But uh, I think these are minor changes. Do you want a motion? Yep. Uh, I'll make a motion to modify the existing plans for um, 64. 64 School Street to reflect the changes um, on drawings dated March 17th, 2018. Um, that would reduce three over three windows to three over one on the front elevation of the house, reduce um, a door from a patio door to a nine light door uh, on the north elevation, and reduce a, s a 12 foot door to a six foot door on the east elevation. And I would just note that the date on these drawings is March 21. Sorry. It's so tiny. I can't I know. Read. It's very small. It says March 21. Thank you. Do we have a second? Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Yay. All right. Thank you, you guys very much. Thanks. Good it's to really, see you. Thank you, Peter. They really appreciate it because it moves this thing along and we can order the windows now and continue with the progress. So thanks very much. All right. Thank Good to see you. Nice. Thank you. Sorry, Ben. Did you want to do that one? Yeah, that's <laughs> all right, Ronnie. That's what happened last time. <laughs> yeah. She's, ben was she gone. steals my thunder. I know. Ben well, was, 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 was a man in right motion. Guaranteed. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you for the next one? Oh, yeah. Yeah. I am. Al. Yo, Al. Nice. Al, 85 Main Street. Al. I need to kill 15 minutes. <laughs> yeah, you were supposed yeah, to go on at 8. I know, but I know. I didn't get a You should sit <laughs> down so the camera can see you. Yeah, so, yeah. <laughs> no, Did you bring I'm sorry. Would you, would you like to buy a paper? We were actually on. <laughs> <laughs> I know. It's televised. I read the agenda. I'm like, no way. We this is going to go till 11. I didn't understand. We were talking about demerits and everything. Oh, you have little demerits. Oh, no. Contentions and demerits. <laughs> Got to write the chocolate. I will not be late for <laughs> Sorry. I apologize. No, it's all right. It's all right. We learned new stuff. Oh. That wasn't very convincing. <laughs> so, Al, you were in last time, um, and you, you ran us through an informal discussion of uh, the small portico. Um, to the uh, to the First Baptist Church, and now we have the um, we have all the official drawings, um, and we also talked a little about the uh, placement of a sign. Mm -hmm. We also talked about um, the interior of this. Any anything else that uh, the change that you thought about since you were last in? It, it, it sort of conformed to what we discussed, and okay, um, it just got a little better, I think, versions and the detailing. So okay. But nothing really changed. The mass didn't change at all. All right. Any other questions for? For Al, based on the details. Now you put the sign above the um, right above the entryway. Uh, is that a good? That's 
I think it, it's, it's nice appropriate there. The yeah, place. there's actually a sign that's below that sign that was sort of um, carved into the the entablature above the <coughs> the existing door. It's even better, but it's, it's bigger and it may not fit. And the reason for the change is just to have a bigger handicap accessible. No, it's not door. handicap accessible. That's not the case. This is just a place where they can drop off parcels that keep them out of the weather. Okay. For um, care packages and those kinds of things. Okay. Something. So that it's not left outside. That it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Will the will your uh, pediment remain the uh, when you walk into yeah. the building? Yeah. It, yeah. It'll just remain just above the transom. That's okay. that's where I'm, I'm aiming at. Right. Was there any um, issue with uh, with zoning? That's the next hurdle. So this is a little bit, um, okay. I won't say out of sequence, but um, if it gets well, received well this evening, then okay. zoning is next. And then there's a, there's a price tag that comes with that. So there's a site plan that needs to be uh, created. And, uh, and it's all, all wood trim except for the door column. and the column. Yep. How about the, uh, the water table? I think that's appropriate. Okay. And the interior is going to be, it's just a drop down with what's already there? It's just a, it's a very generic drywall interior. The flooring. The flooring? We're going to raise up the, the lowest level of floor because it's, it's a depressed drain issue. So we're going to raise that up and get rid of the drain because we don't need that anymore. Okay. So that'll just be probably, and I haven't thought about that. Okay, so no more step down. It, there's two, there's three steps down. Okay. As it, as it is now, three steps down, and it'll just be two. Okay. Because there's three down and then one up again. Right. So the, the threshold of that door will be now <clears throat> even. Right. Yep. So there'll be no need for a railing. Right? The railing goes away. Yeah. Okay. Right. <clears throat> it, it looks like an attractive concept. Yep. I mean, you just want to do a standard true divided light window there, wood, correct? Yep. And it's it's really not an insulation situation anyway. No storm, just a right. Right. Okay. I'd like to make a motion. <laughs> <laughs> there, I have two addresses here, 85 yeah. and 89. I think it's 80. It's 85. It is. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I looked I, it up. Um, 85. 85, okay. I'd like to make a motion for 85 Main Street. Uh, certificate of appropriateness for 85 Main Street. Um, side, uh, left, left hand elevation of the building to install a portico, enclosed portico, all, all trim, all wood trim, um, the exception of the column in the in the door to be fiberglass color to match existing structure well, excuse me plans dated June 7th second second all in favor aye aye, aye. opposed all right thank you all all right i'm really sorry i'm, I'm <laughs> it's all right. We, I don't like being I'm late. saying we had quality. Oh, come time. on. No, no, no. Stop it. It's not helping. We had quality time with each other. <laughs> and the general public. Gem. Although we didn't have to tell you. He didn't. 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 Oh, now I really feel bad. <laughs> Right, thank you. See ya. Have a good night. Thank you. Good night. Andrea, anything else before we uh, All right. Andrea, thank you very much <laughs> for these. Uh, we, oh, we did those, Virginia. We did all of them? I should show the flag. Thank you very much for these flags, Andrea. This is an awesome touch <laughs> yeah, thank you. on this special yes. day. Thank you. Hans took Use it. them. Hans. Use what? them often. Use them. Use your own flag. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, with respect. Yep. And um, yes, uh, I was able to get these from um, our veteran services office. So Keith German and um, Lisa Potts provided. Thank you. Thank you.
Very nice. I'm gonna, Thank you. I'm going to display mine proudly on the fourth. Uh, <laughs> right out of front. <laughs> All right. Anything else for uh, for this evening? All right. I'd like to make a motion to conclude the Historic Districts Commission meeting for this evening. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Great. Thank you.